Okay, hello everybody. We have uh, Beth, Ka uh, Carrie Ann, and Dobby with us today. <coughs> Excuse me. It is currently Mod 2 of 2019. This is DES 109 Graphic Design 1, and I'm your instructor, Melissa Kinney. We are in week two for this particular mod, and this is our live, first live session of the week. So we're going to be doing some critiques today of the assignment that we did last week. We'll do a little review. We'll uh, talk a little bit about, um, hopefully we'll actually be able to um, go into the um, discussion a little bit today and um, kind of jump right into everything. And um, I was just able to open my chat. So hi everybody, um, Beth, Carrie Ann, uh, Dobby. Um, we had the same storm yesterday. Oh yeah, it just, I, I don't know what's going on. I'm surprised we didn't lose it sooner, but I came downstairs to get everything squared away and um, both of my machines were off. So it was like, oh, awesome. So nothing like a, a little bit of a delay to get you going. So, all right, let us get started here. Okay, so we have our week two live session one agenda, and these are typically just kind of like, um, you know, basics that, that I get going with for each of the classes. Sometimes we go a little bit quicker than normal, and I'm able to kind of move on. Sometimes we go a little bit slower, not, you know, not a big deal. Um, but, you know, this is what we're going to try to go over today. We'll do a quick review from last week. Um, I'm going to do some critiques of assignment one, and we'll go over, uh, we'll do a quick overview, excuse me, of week two with a few of the details. And thank you, I thought he was adorable too. <laughs> so where are we right now? We have uh, 109, our course overview. It is, we've done week one, so that's good. We talked a little bit about design trends and design history and how we would use some of the, the influences from the past to work them into a new trend for contemporary use. We worked a little bit with the design principles and just thought theory with the readings and the um, pre-recorded lecture and videos, as well as, um, that was the information that was included in your quiz. This week, we're gonna be talking a little bit more about uh, design history. We're going to also be discussing or talking about the elements of design as well as the principles and how the two of them kind of work together to create uh, uh, an attractive layout, attractive composition, and why they kind of work together. So the assignment for this week, we're gonna be uh, kind of doing like a little continuation from last week where you um, are going to be recreating a, or excuse me, not recreating, creating a poster using a style from one of the errors that you chose for the assignment last week. So if, for example, you chose for your three flashcards, the grunge era, the Victorian era, and the flat style era, then you would choose one of those for your assignment this week. And we'll go a little bit into detail that tomorrow with the demonstration. And then your assessment, there are no more quizzes for the rest of the, the um, for the rest of the, the mod aside from your daily checkpoints. The uh, week two, three, and four assessments are all some kind of project or essay. This week you're gonna be doing a critique about your design process while you're making your assignment. So the advertising makeover, you're going to be critiquing how you go about uh, designing and how about you go about making your choices for your layout. Next week, we'll talk a little bit, bit about inspiration and finding creativity, how you kind of find that muse to, to unblock your artist's block and then learning from the past that's our assignment the uh, learning from the past part one that's our assignment for that week where um, you're going to be actually doing <clears throat> excuse me um a um a different kind of poster where you're going to be given your provided uh, list of artists you're going to do a little bit of research into their styles and then choosing a style based on your information, your research. And then the design and social media assessment is a few um, 
excuse me, social media banner ads. So we'll talk a little bit of photographs and typography that week. And then week four is developing your design online presence in your online portfolio, why it's important, and how to kind of get yourself out there to feature your work and how to best do that. Your assignment for that week is to actually create your portfolio. And the assessment for that week is learning from the past part two, where you'll be taking your poster that you create next week, and you will actually be making revisions of it and submitting the revised version to be uploaded onto your portfolio. So your assignment and your assessment for week four are very closely intertwined. Yeah, I was never a big fan of tests either. Uh, I still am not. Um, I know that they're sometimes important, but especially in this particular subject matter, sometimes the projects actually test your, your knowledge a little bit more. So for a quick review, uh, your grades will be completed by Wednesday morning. I kind of had a psycho weekend, so I'm still kind of compiling all that stuff. Several people sent in uh, the secret questions for um, either the points of the extension, so I'm going to make sure I, I apply those where necessary. If for some reason, for example, you asked for the five points and you got full marks on these assignments, I just hang on to them and then I'll apply them, you know, somewhere else down the line. Uh, so grades will be completed by Wednesday. Late submissions for week one, I will um, accept until Saturday. It just will have a late deduction and that's Saturday, 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time. If you submitted on time and you want to make revisions and see if you can get a higher grade, absolutely can do that. That's also due by the end of the week, 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, have some comments. <laughs> Second guess yourself, Dobby. I absolutely do too, constantly. Um, you should have seen me in my math classes and back in school. It's awful. But um, just so you, you ladies know, just take a look, research the answers, take those notes to make sure that you actually have that information for the next time, okay? And uh, let's see, the re resubmissions. Oh, and looking at the grade comments and rubric, I don't remember if I put that in the announcements, but I do have a little kind of how to, I think I did. Uh, so yes, right here, how to see your grade feedback and comments, just a little information just in case um, those of you out there don't know how to, oh, I always do this. Whoops. Um, just in case those of you out there don't know how to do that, I try to do as many comments on the assignments as, as possible. I, I try to actually do them on the PDF uh, because it's so much easier to have you guys try to figure out exactly what I'm you know, referring to. Sometimes I'll do like little drawings which look horrible, but at least they kind of get the point across. Uh, and it's simply because the you know the tools on there you know aren't great. But it's um, you know sometimes just a little arrow or a circle or something can be a lot more helpful than just writing it down in the rubric. So just make sure that you write uh, you read both of them just to make sure that you kind of know exactly what's going on. So week one, quick review, we were talking about inspirations from the past and blending the design styles where we had that 1960s punk um, discussion, I mean, excuse me, punk poster commission that we were trying to come up with, you know, something new from something old. We were discussing what we would be looking at in terms of researching resources uh, we had a lot of actually great i'm going to actually pull it up right here we had a lot of great discussions there um we're not uh, great posts is actually what i mean there we go um lots of awesome imagery which i think just tends to make things a little bit more interesting you know like this one i think this is anita yep that was anita really kind of uh, helps, you know, put a little bit of perspective in it. And I mean, this Stranger Thing one from Justin. Um, I mean, this, he mentioned, he talked about how it had a great 80s feel to it. Uh, and that had a lot to do with, you know, the, the garments that these guys were wearing and the hairstyles and that kind of thing, which is partially due to, you know, the design of the cover, but also partially due to you know, the, um, the costume design and everything of that particular show. But 
as someone who grew up in the 80s, I think they did a fantastic job with that whole thing right there. We had Grateful Dead. I think this was Dobby. Yep, that was Dobby. Um, so, you know, we, we did have a lot of awesome back and forth. And so I really, really was impressed. And uh, I will make sure that that comes up in the, in the feedback. So for the assignment, we talked about the design history flashcards, where we'll be doing a critique on that for as many as we can do. I try to do as many students as possible. So I try to do maybe one set, like, you know, one front and back of a card and then go on to the next student. Uh, so I'm going to try to get it to as many as those as possible. Sometimes it's difficult because I ramble on, but that's okay. Uh, and then you had the quiz. It looks like we did have uh, some uh, missed answers uh, just given by the conversation I see in the chat over here, but that's all right. Make notes, learn from it because that is definitely the most valuable part. I had a question this week on something that um, it sounded like uh, one answer, so the, the student thought that maybe it was um, a, a wrong answer in the quiz, but I was able to indicate the area that that uh, that, that answer was in. Um, absolutely understandable why he thought, he thought that the answer was uh, repetition as opposed to proximity, and it was a slightly a uh, slightly vague question. It was written uh, pretty word for word in the article, but given the way that that sentence was written, it was absolutely understandable. So just things like that, just kind of make a note so that um, you understand where those um, errors are. And I'll try to make sure, especially a few ladies in here, I'll try to make sure that I go in there and, and take a look at what the wrong answers were and see if I can maybe help direct for, um, for the next time. So, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, like I said, we're gonna start doing some critiques today. So I've got a couple tips here because not only you're gonna find out that in this particular field, not only are you gonna be getting feedback from people, but you're probably also going to be providing feedback quite a bit. And it doesn't matter how long you've been in the game or how long, and uh, I've, coworker or a classmate has been in the game, you can always learn something from other people. I'm learning things from my students as I, you know, go ahead and teach this course. I currently don't work with a lot of artists in my other job, but even that's okay. When you're working with non-artists, sometimes they have a completely different perspective. So it's, it's always really good to keep in mind both how to receive the feedback and how to give it, you know, in kind of a, a gracious manner. So I typically go by the rule of three, where you are, whoops, excuse me, I hit that too soon, where um, some people like to do like a compliment sandwich, which um, after reading through a lot of different, you know, suggestions and tips on how to give a good critique, I like to kind of stay away from that because when it, the, the compliment sandwich, although it can um, sound like a good idea, sometimes it can sound like uh, maybe you don't, especially mean the compliments and I don't like doing that. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I try to do uh, like we have here, the rule of three, where I try to find three good things that, uh, or three positives about the, the image, the layout that I'm critiquing, uh, as well as three areas that might need a little bit of improvement or a little bit of work. Even if it is the absolute best layout I've ever seen before. There is always room for improvement. Same thing for my work. There's always room for improvement. I very often ask my Spanish teacher husband for feedback on my designs because I know that he's going to look at something differently than I do. I even sometimes ask my kids. So, and you know, you just make sure that you don't take it personally. You just take it into consideration, I guess. When you are providing feedback, when you are providing a critique, be specific in what it is that you like and why you think it works. Don't just say, I like that, because that doesn't really help the person that you are, uh, whose work you're critiquing. It gives them an idea that of um, popular opinion, but that's about it. We're, we're looking for a little bit more than just a, a subjective opinion. So we're looking for, oh, well, maybe it should actually be over to the left a little bit because it looks like it's kind of lopsided. It might tip over. It doesn't look balanced. It looks like it's missing something, 
or you know what these colors work really well together because it provides kind of a cool kind of look to it and um oh uh it's good to you girl you send out an announcement it's great beth i'm really glad that you did that uh they printed it out wrote out all the wrong questions and it's okay that's good too that you wrote down all the the answers to the raw the questions you've gotten wrong and look them up perfect and carrie ann says uh you wish you could get yours critiqued you can absolutely get yours critiqued uh, carrie ann i mean i'm gonna what I will uh, show you in a minute, I don't have everything named over here. So I very well may critique yours and maybe you don't even know it. I downloaded them last night. Um, but if you haven't, you can absolutely get yours critiqued. I can do a, um, a recording in the multi-session or something and send it to you. That's not a problem at all. Okay. Just wanted to make sure I, 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 if I stop in the middle of these and then start talking to you ladies, it's because I want to make sure that you know that I'm watching the, the chat there. Uh, so in giving a critique as well, make sure that you are considering the principles of design, CRAP, contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity. And a big, big thing, this is kind of where our, uh, our instructions, our bullet points kind of tip the scales and we go from being a critiquer to a critique -y. Whatever feedback you're giving to the colleague or the coworker or the classmate, apply that to your own work as well. Make sure that you're not uh, being hypocritical essentially, but it is very, very easy to kind of glaze over various things that you think maybe if it were someone else's work you maybe would think needs improvement but you don't realize it needs improvement in your own work so just kind of make sure you're putting yourself in that other person's shoes and see if that could apply to your own your own designs don't be offended if the designer doesn't take your suggestions that is a very likely situation you are providing feedback, you're providing suggestions, and if ultimately the designer is the one that's going to be making the final decision. So don't, don't worry about it if they decide not to take it. However, if you're on the other side and you're getting suggestions and you're getting feedback, think, really, really consider why you're not taking the concession, the suggestions. Is there a really good reason why you're not taking it? Or is it simply a, I, you really don't want to or I really don't think so or you know kind of make sure that you're 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 considering all aspects of that particular critique or criticism and figure out the best the best way to do that oh and I'm sorry if there's a lot of noise coming we I think we have someone up here for the dishwasher um, and then lastly remember that when you are being critiqued or when your when your work is being critiqued remember that your work is not you per, that person is not criticizing you they are not critiquing you it is simply the piece that they are looking at so do not take that as a, a jab at yourself that is probably one of the most difficult things about this job is realizing that everyone is going to have an opinion and it's not always going to work with your own and that's okay that's one of the wonderful things about art and design there are going to be instances where you are completely against what the other person wants and it's going to kill you to have to put it together but in the end if your customer is happy or if your employer is happy that's really you know the the best um, that's, that's really what you're aiming for that and to make sure that the message gets out and if you're really not happy with it, you just don't put your name on it. Because <laughs> there are definitely instances like that where I will put things in my portfolio that I thought was better um, in the first few stages than after my client, you know, attacked it. So it, it, it does happen. All right. So uh, are, are we ready, ladies, for our critiques for today? All right. Let's see what we got for today. Now this is what I actually usually do. I usually put submissions and then I just rename everyone's submissions. Um, excuse me, I did notice I got some that I could not work with. So 
uh, just waiting on those students to actually resubmit. But this is actually how we, how I do, oh, it opened up in the wrong window. You, come on. There we go. That way no one is, um, everyone's anonymous. So let me take a look here after Acrobat decides it wants to be cooperative. Okay, there we go. I think that there was one in particular. I wanted to, actually, this is it, I think it was. All right, so we have uh, three very, very different styles here. We have grunge, we have postmodern, and we have heroic realism. So I'm actually going to go for this one right here. Uh, for the grunge era, we have uh, textured imagery, we have kind of dirty, worn, weathered kind of looks. Excuse me, like this student said, dirty Mac backgrounds, hand-drawn text and doodles, fonts that are distressed looking. There was, there was some real life imagery, maybe even some kind of collage looking stuff there. You know, very, very much, you know, a no rules kind of thing. You know, it was um, during the Nirvana kind of area where people are trying to rebel. And by people, I mean youngsters. But uh, there was, you know, a lot of dirty green, like we have yet, like like a camo green, blacks, rust, you know, so, so browns, greens. There were plenty of black and whites as well, depending on, you know, what image you happen to, to be working with. So a lot of the information here is great. We have some, we have alignment, we have center alignment where this individual decided to use center justification for all the text. And pretty much we have a very nice use of contrast here where we have one font here, another font here, and then this other font to kind of balance it out. So we have you know, your, main, your main text, your main title is in a big, bold, distressed looking font. 1990s to the present using the date, which is kind of less important than the name of the era. <clears throat> excuse me, so that's using hierarchy. Hierarchy is when you have the more important information is gonna be larger, bolder, is going to be more, uh, drawing more attention to the reader. And then the rest of the information, which is more the paragraphed, paragraph copy, is in this uh, slightly handwriting looking, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of font, but it's still very easily read, which is great, because that can be very tricky to kind of, kind of balance out to be using an interesting looking font but keeping it readable uh, let me see we have um, the the colors we have the repetition we it looks like this brown kind of came from within this particular image which is great another kind of olive -y kind of look right here and with the the I keep wanting to say, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm having a hard time getting the word student out for some reason today. I keep keep um, tripping over my tongue. This individual, this student decided to kind of balance it a little bit differently by, we have black here, then we have olive, then we have black, uh, yes, black, and then we have all. So we have kind of a continuation as you, as you read down the flashcard. When we have proximity, a very nice border all the way around the card. We probably could use a little bit of space in between here, um, just because it looks like maybe the picture is kind of encroaching on it a little bit. And you can do that by decreasing the width of the text box or just you know nudging, nudging it over a little bit. <clears throat> we have a nice amount of space between the, uh, they're essentially categories where we have, you know, the title of the piece as well as the artist, and that's kind of broken up right here, broken up right here as well. So that really increases the readability. Um, something I also want to make sure that I point out, and this is incredibly common, so uh, whether this is someone that's watching right now or someone will be, will be watching uh, the recording, uh, we have the, these line breaks right here. Uh, let's do, 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 draw right here and right here. Just be careful of those. It's very easy to have that, um, have that happen. I, pretty much almost all of the students in this class 
do it at one point or another. I know that I even did it recently within the last couple of months. It, there aren't a lot of applications where the client is going to want that. And typically you'll see that in applications that are that have a lot of text, great volume of text. So a novel, a magazine, uh, maybe some kind of textbook, but flashcards or a poster or something like that, typically the customer would rather that you place your return somewhere else, maybe before the word or after the word, and then reformat the rest of the line. And that, like I said, do not feel bad about that. This is a, a learning thing. And it's just one of those things to, to try to keep in mind. And then when we go to the back, the reason why I wanted to make sure I showed this particular um, color palette, it was done, I think it was done really, really nicely. It is very well, well uh, centered and aligned. We have this uh, yellowish kind of ochre kind of color right in the middle which is centered within everything else then we have these other shapes that they're not lined you know we don't have this line lined up with this line right here but it's kind of reflected the 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 layout the over uh, overlap is kind of reflected over here so we have a kind of balance same thing with this lighter green and the darker green so it looks it looks really, really even, really kind of centered. And then the individual, this student, created this darker color as well to make sure that you could read the citation. So I thought that was really good because even though, you know, there's a little bit of a transparency behind it where you can see this line right back here, that line and that change from the green to the brown, it doesn't make it difficult to read because there's enough contrast between the the dark and the white and the dark overlays these two images sometimes it's very easy to to put an overlay of something whether it's text or an image and the background is just a little bit too busy and then it makes it a little difficult to read so um, but they they did a really nice job here it's centered both vertically and horizontally in these dark boxes which I thought was really great as well. Uh, contrast, repetition, alignment, proximity. Okay, good, I got all four in this one. <laughs> uh, you didn't necessarily carry in. I haven't, like I said, I, I haven't had a chance to look at them yet. That was one example. Oh, why does it keep opening up on my other screen? Let me see if I can find another, because I know that there was one that did it, I think it did it vertically. So let, but once, once um, I take a look at it, I, I'll let you know. Oh, my goodness, Acrobat is not behaving today. And sometimes I like to open these things all up ahead of time, but obviously I couldn't today. But um, that doesn't even very often, it doesn't even help me. Oh, you know what, maybe it was the, maybe it was that, just that PDF that was, oh no, it decided to open finally. Oh, for God's sakes. Let's see if I'm looking for a particular one that I thought I saw. Um, no, that wasn't one, but I do want to show that one. Ah, here we go. This is the one I was looking for. There we go. So we have this one right here. They did theirs in a, a slightly different orientation. Oops, did I just do that? No, I don't think I did that. I'm just gonna rotate this real quick because it showed up rotated. It showed up the correct, correct way. So I think I accidentally just turned it. There we go. And rotate that one as well. Okay. Don't worry about knowing how to do that. I, <laughs> okay. So Dobby, which uh, which one do you think is a cool font? The, the, the title here, Art Deco. Yeah, that's uh, that definitely is really neat. It's it's almost like there we go. It almost could even be considered a Victorian style too because it is very decorative. But I I think it does actually work with the Art Deco kind of look. So Art Deco 
had a very classy kind of look to it back in the 1920s and 30s where you had people in their top hats and their nice dresses and you know all, all these all these kinds of things that people actually cared about um you, you know you might want to think of you know the chrysler building or um you know men walking around with their monocles and 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 just very suave and sophisticated it had a lot of geometric lines a lot of order kind of grid-like kind of design work um they let me see i'm just trying to think this individual actually kind of used some of the geometric shapes in their color palette which was kind of neat and so for their why is this doing this i'm getting very frustrated here because i zoomed out and it chopped some of it off that's not cool i'm not liking that so <clears throat> and it's very distracting so this individual decided to choose this particular image that has the beiges, the light tan, this nice turquoise, the dark maroon, which has a great contrast to it. And they decided they were gonna align everything on the center of the entire thing. So the, the first flashcard we saw kind of had the image on the left and then the text on the right. This one decided, oh, well, we have uh, a, an image that's really taller than it is wide. Excuse me, more, more tall, taller, excuse me and so they said oh, well you know what i'd like to put that in this manner instead so we have everything that is nicely center aligned we might have been able to maybe increase the size of it because there is a, quite a bit of space up here that's all right we have some good contrast because we have this nice big bold oops nice big bold title and again, use of hierarchy. We have this, the smaller kind of era, and then some even smaller paragraph copy. We have some spacing in between the two paragraphs, which is good. This individual decided to say, okay, I'm gonna center my paragraph text right underneath the image and the title and the era, but I'm gonna have it left justified, which also kind of works. We have another line break right here. So it, like I mentioned it previously, that is very, very, common it's very easy to do so it's just something to keep an eye out on and make sure that that is something that you watch for um, repetition uh, probably could have used a little bit more repetition maybe <clears throat> excuse me maybe uh, it used these colors in the text here you know this I know that as a font you probably could only select it and then change the, you know, one of the colors then these white parts are probably cutouts some way that you can uh, a way that you can get around that is to convert the text to outlines and then fill it all in so that you actually have those little swirly guys that takes a little bit more time but you know and this is this is a, a course it's not a paid job but that's something you can maybe give it a try and see how see how that works for you that it requires a little bit of use of the pathfinder tools which very very helpful and awesome tools something like that depends on you know your your comfort level the pathfinder tools with illustrator and indesign are actually exactly the same some people might be more comfortable making that change in illustrator and then importing it into indesign either way is absolutely fine so maybe we could do that and then maybe, <clears throat> excuse me, my goodness, either using this flat font, which probably would work well with the Art Deco, this sans serif font for the paragraph copy. Because even if you used the same font, if you were to make it bold or italic or even just a little bit bigger, it would still contrast with this other paragraph copy and you'd be you'd be all set okay and then down here the really interesting color palette here with the geometric shapes they centered the citation within this this block right here uh what looks like we maybe could have moved it just a little bit further down but you know that's all the kind of all kind of depends on how the text was was laid out this text box might actually when you center the text box with the block indesign might actually think that that's centered so that's also something you need to make sure you watch out for if you're just using the automatic tools because that can be that can be very tricky we have a really good use of proximity here 
because this is all very balanced. They have this shape right here, in addition to the maroon and the you know khaki colored shapes, they're all centered amongst themselves. <clears throat> Excuse me, my goodness. Uh, we also have this, this nice border around here. And even, even right up here, we have a little bit of space up top here, but it's equal to the space we have down here. I'm trying to see what else we got repetition, contrast, alignment, proximity. Yep, we got everything there. Okay. Uh, no, no, we do not. <clears throat> Let's see. I'll try to do one more and then we'll we'll actually go and take a look at some some of the other information that we need to do. And if we have time, we'll do some more. Okay. Uh, now I will actually I'll bring in bring in my students that are, are in my class today. I really liked this one um, in terms of being able to, to critique it for you guys. Do we have, what, what do we have for examples of contrast in this particular flashcard? <clears throat> Excuse me. You have any, any suggestions, ladies? Colors in the text? Yeah, we have the yellow and the blue. So those are actually, we have the yellow and the blue, they're, they've contrast very well. Let me see if I can actually zoom in here without it being all freaky again. So the, the, the yellow and the blue don't run together because there's enough contrast there. And then we also have you know, the, the blue against the black. So those, they create contrast, they create a little bit of um, interest, they make it more interesting. My goodness, I am having a hard time today. Uh, let's see what else we got. Text type, yes, we have the, the typography. We have bold information here, non-bold here, and then these, these two up here, these are obviously the same font, but they're not the same as the paragraph copy. The alignment, there is actually a little bit of, of contrast in the alignment because we have centered here and then, whoops, left justified here. So we have that, that would be contrast. How about repetition? Any, any suggestions of where we find repetition in this card? <clears throat> the error title, error title is similar to the poster. Very good, that's actually probably identical. Um, oh, you know what, actually, nope, it's a little bit different because you can see right here, this C, it doesn't have the serif that this one does right here. The R's are almost identical. I'm willing to bet, uh, let's see, Rampart, watch. I'm willing to bet that this is maybe Palatino Linotype. This might be Garamond, I'm not sure. But um, there's actually a great resource that I'll actually show you guys real quick because I know I didn't do it the other day. When you are trying to figure out a font and you just can't figure it out because it, it happens, it happens a lot, you can actually isolate let me see. I'm trying to see if I have something on my desktop right here that I can use. And it does not look like it. You can actually isolate whatever word it is you're trying to match. <clears throat> this is myfonts.com. And this what the font. Oops, not the forum, not the forum. Oh, oh, good. I didn't click on the forum. This is a little font generator where you can, we'll put this one in here just for now. I'm just dragging an image in here. Um, Oh, hey, look at that, it, it pulled something up, wonderful. Okay, you can actually isolate your image, and the, the more isolated the image that you upload is, the better. Okay, so I'm just gonna isolate these letters in here. You click the arrow, and it gives you suggestions of the type that it is. Sometimes you come up exactly with what you're looking for, sometimes it's not even close. <laughs> if there is no similar suggestion, you can actually create an account and 
you can actually upload this and people will submit they'll take a look at it and they'll provide suggestions uh it is a hugely helpful tool um and i think you can actually even download it i think there's an app for your phone that you can even do if you happen to be like out and about and you're trying to figure something out um, but this comes really really in handy when you're trying to match something or you have an old job of <clears throat> excuse me some kind of flattened artwork that you you can't use super super helpful um let me see okay so we have yeah you you guys are just going right at it i love it uh so we have no line breaks good job carrie and that's that's absolutely right there's no line breaks in there so this person did a good job of making sure there weren't any in there uh, let's see what else we got in the text yeah, with the color so we actually yep the the colors we do have some repetition with the the blue and the yellow kind of repeating right over here and they probably even sampled it to get a nice a close match which is good let's see what else the bold of the text and the regular text is a good repetition for the body. Yep, yeah, we have that like the same kind of formatting where we have the bold kind of title for the, the category, and then the paragraph copy is a regular or book. That's what we got here. So in this particular individual, so they they have uh, the rep, the repetition just like that. We could even maybe use repetition a little bit more by using this font right in here. So that would actually connect the top title to these other titles as well. And it would force your eye to kind of boom, write down, make you, it would kind of make you, you know, continue reading. They have a nice proximity, uh, a nice proximity, nice use of proximity because we have nice spacing in between. So this information is all supposed to be grouped together. This information is all supposed to be grouped together. Okay. So we have, Repetition, alignment, proximity, alignment, we have, I think we already mentioned actually when we were talking about contrast, where we have the center alignment and the left justification here. But you can tell that this, even though this is left justified, you can tell that this particular text box was lined up with the center here. And then in addition to that, this entire group of text, if we were to put this entire thing together, you, you'll notice is centered right this way the vertical centers of uh, the uh, horizontal centers i'm sorry are lined up here so we they they did a very nice job and then this one right here we have a really kind of interesting very uh symmetrical kind of kind of color palette it's not too close to the border here which can be very e easy to do um, it looks like maybe we had a little bit of an issue with the letting here, and that's that's working with InDesign. That is really true. It took me a long time to to really work with that. When you have a text box and the the text is just going and going and going, for example, like right here, it's I mean it's technically a line break, but I'm not going to give anybody a hard time about that one here because it's a citation and those things are insanely long. The um, the letting sometimes can get a little bit messed up. Sometimes it means that there's extra space at the end here. Sometimes, I don't even know, sometimes you just need to like fool around with it a little bit, but you, you can notice that this spacing between these two lines and this spacing between these two lines is a little bit different. And we could probably actually take the references and center it because they've made such a nice symmetrical color, pa color palette, excuse me, that it would kind of almost be like these. This point is kind of pointing to the to the citation. So letting always gives you it. Oh, it, Carrie, and I'm I'm telling you, letting can be it can be very very tricky. But once you kind of figure it out, I mean, sometimes it has to do with you know highlighting the right things. Excuse me. Um, instead of highlighting an individual line. It is, it can be very tricky and sometimes it just requires a little bit of, you know, trial and error and practicing. Uh, matching the length of the picture. Yes, Dobby, you're absolutely right. The information here, it matches the length of the picture. Now we, this can be very, th this can be very easily um, messed up because if this individual only had 
this information didn't have didn't have this bottom stuff we'd have all this extra space right there and that's that's a challenge one of the many challenges that we have as designers so in that case we could do a couple of different things you could actually justify it so that all of the text in here kind of gets evenly spaced out there's actually uh it's control b which is probably command b i think <clears throat> excuse me and it brings up different justification options within the text box and it would actually justify it the entire height of the text box another thing you could do is take this text box and center it with this image right here oops excuse me that was not on purpose so you'd end up actually with her realism probably starting you probably have that title starting right about here and then the rest of the, the text would probably end maybe right about there so there are different ways that you can kind of kind of work around that uh i feel like you messed up your citations well we'll see maybe may, don't worry about it too much uh always have an issue with citations uh again don't don't worry about it too much i'll take a look and and since you're mentioning it right here and well we can work on that we can work on that so we had oops we had oh for goodness sake my stupid little dot up there won't go away there we go so we've done a couple of critiques let's just go back to the powerpoint presentation real quick make sure that we're not missing anything which i think we are because we need our secret question for today which what was the high temperature yesterday february 24th is that yep the 24th in salt lake city utah do are any anybody that's in here today are you guys from salt lake city i didn't think so because I know that at this particular class, we're coming from like all over the place. Washington, Wenatchee, is that how you, is that how you pronounce that, Davi? Wenatchee? Wenatchee, okay, Escondido, wow. Yeah, see, again, we're like all over the place. <laughs> Ohio, yeah, so um, <laughs> I was surprised to see what the temperature was yesterday because it was a heck of a lot colder out here in Massachusetts. But yesterday was 46 degrees, a balmy 46 degrees. <laughs> so that's your secret question for today. Um, and then, you know what? I hate wasting time on Tuesdays for the discussion. Let's actually go through the discussion real quick. Because our next session is going to be tomorrow, Tuesday at 12.30 p.m. Mountain Time just like usual and we will go briefly go over the assessment i can't do step by step like i can for the assignment but it since it's kind of connected to the assignment i do have to make sure i go over it a little bit for you guys and we will do the the demo for the assignment so let's go let's take a quick peek at the discussion because i do have enough time for that do, 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 do. I think we have the menus this week. Uh, and I know someone mentioned something about menu designs last week in the discussion. It's like they were jumping ahead. Let's see, yes, we have the menu discussion this week, wonderful. Okay, so after having watched the pre-recorded lecture, you're gonna notice that there's a talk about the elements of design and the principles of design and how they work together so for example we have the principles of design contrast repetition alignment and proximity and the elements of design of which for example we have point line shape color texture and type so uh, you had to design a menu last month is that within the the typography class carry on des103 Oh, and 105. Oh, so we had two different ones. And yes, InDesign. Yep. That, I mean, it's so much easier to do it in InDesign, believe me. I had to do that. Uh, Ms. Um, Ms. McNamara and I worked for a, a direct mail place, and that was almost all we did. It was just Chinese food menus and everything else. It was a little insane. Oh, do a DS 105? Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> Not a problem. So what we're gonna have this week, we are 
talking about how we would redesign a menu. We're not given an image here. We're just uh, given information. So the original menu for the local coffee shop that we are going to be pretending that we're redesigning. The original menu was created by the owners, which you have you know, definitely lots of uh, small businesses that will do that, whether it's a menu or just an advertisement. The coffee shop owners wanted to keep everything in neutral shades of brown and decided to make all the words the same size and use a different font for every drink because they thought the menu would look more friendly and casual. Instead, customers began complaining the menu felt confusing and hard to read. That's a big no-no. However, what you guys will be talking about this week is why their design is a big no-no. What you might do to redesign it. Would you change the colors? Would you change the fonts? Would you change the sizes? Would you add imagery? All of these different things are ways that you could actually work with it. So on the redesign, it says you use a simple contrasting color scheme, differing weights of the same font, set up a clear grid layout, and grouped beverages together. So what you need to do is imagine how you would be explaining all of these different changes to the customer, or excuse me, the, the coffee shop owner. So our customer, we would explain the design element and design principle usage. So you'll be pointing out what principles and elements you're using and how, how they relate to each other, and how these might have been lacking in the original menus. I have just, I've provided a couple just to kind of give a, an example of, I, I don't want to say a good menu and a bad menu because there are going to be different, excuse me, differing opinions, but just to kind of show, you know, give, provide a, a, a comparison in being able to, to decipher, okay, well, what elements are missing from the first menu? What are missing from the second menu? Which ones are better? Which ones are worse? There's another article right here that is not, I, I, like I've mentioned before, I hate providing resources that take too long. So um, it's just a quick read. And if you've been having a little bit of trouble with any of the other readings, this is really, really clear and succinct. So that might actually be able to, to help a little bit. But that's what we're going to be talking about this week. Okay. And let's see, we got two, two minutes left. So that leaves us just enough time to ask Carrie Ann, Dobby, and Beth, do we have any questions or do you guys need anything clarified for today? No, no. No questions as of yet? Wonderful. Well, I will take a look, Carrie Ann, and um, you know, actually, before I even say this, is it Carrie Ann or Kari Ann? I want to make sure that I spell, I sound that, that's pronounced that right. So like, uh, like Carrie and not like the car? Straightforward, how I like it. <laughs> All right. Just want to make sure because I like I keep mentioning I just like to make sure that I, I am pronouncing everything correctly. Um, so maybe I will see the 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 three of you tomorrow. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll see uh, other other students come on in. However, uh, and whomever I happen to have in tomorrow, uh, this video will be uploaded within an hour. And I hope. Uh, yeah, you'll you'll be here. All right, great. Well, I hope you three have a great rest of your day. I hope all you watching have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you tomorrow.